Welcome to Struggle, Grow, Succeed. We've got a real treat for you today. We have a guest with us that we're going to be doing an interview with. His name is Peter Ryback. He is from Sydney, Australia. Now, Peter is a mentor. He's a coach. He's a sales guy, and he has got some great insight into selling and some of the experiences that he has had in his lifetime. He is a world traveler, and I'm sure you will enjoy hearing what Peter has to say. So stay tuned on Struggle, Grow, Succeed. Peter, welcome to Struggle, Grow, Succeed. Yeah, thank you very much. Welcome all, and uh, pleasure to be here. Um, I met uh, Peter just basically online. Uh, he was referred to me by uh, Pete Jones, <clears throat> who uh, is a member of our group as well. And he said, this would be a great guy to interview. So for our first interview, we're going to, uh, to try, try it out on Peter. <laughs> so we hope it goes well for you. Um, tell us just a little bit about yourself, Peter. Yeah, so very briefly, I'm originally from Poland. Uh, that's where I've been born, born and grow up for the first 20 years of my life. I came to Australia in 78 because simply I was sick and tired of the communist system and also, but it was really more about holiday and proven that it can be done because I've been told that it cannot be done, that I won't get the passport, but I got the passport and got to Australia. Uh, first couple of years, I was working obviously factories. I didn't know English. It's, uh, it was a bit hard because I was starting the day from six o'clock in the morning, finishing at 11. Then finally I got to my position, which by qualification I'm survivor. And then ever since I've been doing businesses, uh, I went back to Poland in, back in 89 been away from Australia for eight years. In the meantime, I was having cosmetic factory, international broker and uh, offices in Europe, uh, Brazil, Uruguay, and so on, and came back to Australia back in 97. And ever since I've been working in sales, uh, so I practically in sales for over four, four years. And that's what I love, that's what my mission is. Excellent. Well, you are definitely a world traveler, so you've got to see a lot of different cultures in your travels, I guess, and, and see how pe different people uh, work and how they live. And that's, that's had to be very interesting. Yeah, definitely. I've seen a few of those. And uh, every country is a little bit different, but at the same time, we're all the same people. Uh, we just got the good days, we've got bad days, and depends where we want to go and what we want to do that's what we finish up and regardless of which country we are in they are always the opportunities and the doors to be open if you're looking for them absolutely i agree with that 100 percent um I, there's a couple of things i wanted to talk to you you mentioned that you've been in sales in the last few years and uh, as i was talking to you uh you had told me that uh that you guys had uh had broke some records is that right this year yeah, that's, that's correct. Uh, uh, my pleasure that my team from Sydney, all the records that we've broken in my company of 15 years of the company, it's belong to us. So that's definitely helpful. But uh, when the pandemic hit and everybody been screaming and business is closing, so we thought that could be a good idea to break the record in May. And uh, as a company, uh, in Sydney, Sydney office, if we're talking through all the branches, uh, we actually beat all time records, uh, including the, the record that's been standing for a few years, uh, that's been done in five weeks, month. We've done it in four weeks, month during the pandemic. So even the CEO said that it's always good to do a million dollars over in turnover for one, for one division, but doing that in the pandemic is insane. So that was his words. Well, uh, what would you contribute that to? I mean, it's May. It's not, it's not the normal month for you guys to do so well. What would you say was, was the primary reason that you guys were able to just make up your mind to, uh, to break a record? Uh, definitely simply that, that, that that's it. The right mindset and winning attitude and not believing that the, the, the sky is falling because it's not. If you get the right mindset and the winning attitude, in you and you don't believe it that everything is collapsing there is always opportunities there are always doors to be open uh, plus uh, obviously that was the team effort and uh, we couldn't do the 
our normal activities like shows and shopping centers and, and things like that. So it's everything through the internet. So thanks to our IT guys that actually been able to get us the leads and the ladies actually transform those leads into their appointments. Excellent. So, so we had plenty of appointments. Actually, we had probably more appointments than we normally doing at this time of the year. But uh, at the same time, we had very house closing ratio because everyone contributed to it. We've been pushing pretty hard. So yes, uh, I've done a few sales myself, maybe more than a few, but <laughs> that's beside the point. <laughs> uh, well, um, you know, you mentioned mindset. You mentioned a couple of things there. Uh, I work at, at a car dealership and uh, through the pandemic, we had to close for a couple of weeks, but we kept working the internet leads just like you're talking about. We had people working from home. We would meet on Zoom like we're doing right now. And uh, we would actually take cars to people's house and we'd take the paperwork there. And what it done basically was keep us in a working mindset. So rather than just stopping and waiting, uh, we kept kept moving forward. And so uh, we too, this, this May, uh, we broke a record, an all time record for May right in the middle of a pandemic. So that's kind of why I wanted to talk to you about that. When, when you said that you guys had broke a record, I mean, this pandemic has been all over the world. It's affected a lot of people. But there have been a lot of people that have won time, uh, and I believe it's the people who didn't quit. What do you think? Yeah, that's that's the main thing. That simply ne never quit, regardless. Like uh, we've been lucky because we actually decided that we're not stopping, so we continue seeing people right through. We didn't even close the factory for one day, and okay, we allowed everybody that was uncomfortable working and things like that to take as much time as they want. So we actually have done this record on the uh, limited number of people as well. Uh, with a couple of new guys that have been able to pull the miracles as well. So we're very happy with them starting and doing good numbers in the first few weeks uh, of their career with us. And so everybody put, put the, the effort, but the main thing it was definitely that we just decided that we keep going. We're not going to stop, that this is nonsense. And more people dying from normal flu than from this, so we might as well <laughs> take the risk and go for it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, uh, congratulations for that. That's a great milestone. Um, one other thing I wanted to talk to you while I've got you on here. Uh, I know you've been, you've been in a lot of different jobs. You've tra traveled the world, um, and I'm sure that you've been in in several leadership roles. And one of the questions that I wanted to ask you, Peter, was um, do you think that there is a difference between a leader and a boss? I know that everybody says, well, this is my boss, my boss says this, my boss says that, but do you feel like it is the exact same thing or do you feel like that there is actually a difference between a leader and a boss? It's one thing uh, what I think what it should be, because I definitely believe that it should be that the, in the management position should be a leader. Unfortunately, if, as you probably are aware, and I've had plenty of examples that it's hardly ever happened. The managers are just the managers. And to me, it's a huge difference between the manager and, and the boss, because, and the boss and also the leader. Like, Yes, uh, I've been CEO of some of the companies. I had my own businesses and I'm talking international. But in my opinion, if you don't lead from the front, you're just the manager. If you're telling people to do it without showing them and leading them, you're just, just a manager like everybody else. And as a matter of fact, for just telling people what to do, they are overpaid. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So. Uh, because the, the leader is simply to create the new leaders and encourage people to actually willing to be there, to be proud that they are part of the team and not just act like a boss and telling them, you know, do this or do that uh, because I'm the boss. You, you, that, that's just a title. Right. The title got nothing to do with the leadership. You can't buy the leadership or you can't have, be a leader just with the title. You have to be a leader. So you have to simply lead from the front and, and show people how to do it and uh, never be afraid to do, be with them on the front line, not just on the back and telling you, go do it. If that doesn't work. Yep, I, I agree. Uh, you know, I've seen, uh, 
I have worked with a lot of people who were actually leaders who weren't even a manager or weren't even the boss, but everybody on the team would follow them because they had certain, uh, certain mindset, certain skills that people just wanted to follow. And I know I've worked for some great, uh, uh, leaders. I've worked for some managers. I've worked for some bosses. And I know if you lead people, like you said, from the front and you said one word that is important to me and that's encouragement, you know, uh, everybody don't have a good day every day. They don't win every single day. And for them to realize that, you know, even if you're losing, you know, you can still win tomorrow. That, that encouragement, um, when you start building people like that and building a team as a leader, I feel like they'll run through a block wall for you, you know, uh, and with a boss, they'll do what they say, but will they go through a block wall for somebody who's just telling them what to do? I don't think so. Uh, I'm pretty sure they won't because I'm, I, I know I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and uh, look, I, I may or not in the management position. Yes, it's not because uh, I didn't be off it, but simply what I'm doing is more beneficial for me. But at the same time, I believe I'm a leader. The, the people will listen and I'm training people and, and, and so on. But for the title, I'm just a, just a designer. Hmm. And I couldn't care less about that. And, uh, but I'm proud to be part of this team. Uh, but as I said, uh, as you said, uh, if you are just a manager, you never get people going through the wall. And uh, that, that's the difference. That's the biggest difference, uh, in my opinion. And as, you, as you're familiar with the car industry and things like that, uh, yeah, I've done some of that as well. Uh, I've been a dealership. I used to have a dealership. Uh, at one stage and uh, so I know a little bit and in the car industry it's, it's the same as everywhere else the sales are sales you're meeting people you have to create and you have to lead even in the if you're presenting to people if you're not the leader how are you expecting them to follow and actually put the order so it doesn't matter what the position you are if you're a manager if you're the boss if you see CEO it, it's just a title which in my opinion got nothing to do with the leadership you, you can be cleaning and you, you could be janitor and you could be a leader and the boss of that building could be just a boss. Right. That's right. Uh, it's definitely, it's definitely the way you treat people and, um, and the way they respond to you. Um, well, that's great. I appreciate your insight on that. Um, we're thinking about doing a, a little training on leader versus boss because, you know, um, we work with a lot of young people and we hire a lot of young salespeople. And you can almost instantly see leadership qualities in some of the people that you hire based number one on how they handle a customer. You mentioned that a minute ago, how someone may, may sell, uh, and they can, they can make that impact on a customer just like they can a coworker. And, you know, it's easy to see sometimes, uh, a young person with the right encouragement, you can just see that leadership down inside them. They just don't have the experience yet, but you can see that they have the, the maturity level to to be a leader and that's that's always more important for me than anything else if i'm doing the hiring to me is the leadership sort of qualities and attitude than anything else i don't even look the cvs most of the time i might ask to to, to get to see the cv but i don't remember when was the last time i actually read through the cv because to me it's the personal contact important and that's I right. can ask them the questions when I'm there because anybody can put the great CV. Like anybody can have a title boss. That's right. But not everybody can be a leader. It's funny. We do, uh, we do an assessment with everybody that we hire. And uh, one of the areas down there has uh, easily annoyed. And f for most people, they wouldn't want somebody like that. But we look for somebody that's very easily annoyed because we know that they have that drive in them. Uh, and when we have hired people based on that, they have really been a go-getter. Now you gotta, you gotta con have some control a little bit because a good sales person, <coughs> excuse me, is, is, um, is, is a real go-getter. And I mean, they, right. they've got a drive and, uh, sometimes you gotta keep some reins on them, but, uh, usually if you can direct them in the right path and that's where a leader leadership is very important to, if you've got somebody that's, that's really got the drive, you just have to steer them in the right direction. Like you would wild horse, right? 
Absolutely, that's that's the main thing. And uh, as I said, I always looking for action takers. So, because we've got four different types of people, as you are aware of, and I don't think so. It's a time to go into into this uh, this interview because we could discuss for hours. For hours, that's right. <laughs> this oh. those subjects, but uh, yeah, now it's very important. To any any sales position, it, it has to be a go getter because otherwise, you know. It's not yeah. going to happen yeah, as simple true. as that. But at the same time, the person has to be able to understand and read the customer and adjust their language to the language that the customer like to hear, because right. that's what makes them to understand better. And same thing with the, with the leadership. You have to understand your own people who you're dealing with and talk to the language that they will understand and they will actually uh, like it and, and follow you like you can have staff of 12 people and you have to d show the leadership into different ways to every single person because they all could be different and what would work for one then it's not going to work for another one so obviously you as a leader you have to be able to switch and be sort of like a chameleon sometimes to adjust to all the people and and and, and talk their language absolutely um, I appreciate that insight. And, um, what's, what's great is, you know, you being in Australia, we've had, we've had a time getting our times together. Uh, I'm kind of living in your past, right? It's Monday where you're at. It's Sunday evening where I'm at. <laughs> uh, and uh, you're living in the future. So you let me know if anything's headed our way, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, absolutely. Charles. I'm in a, I'm in a, another group. It's called, uh, Hashtag rise and grind. I don't know if you're familiar with that group or not, but Glenn Lundy is uh, kind of the leader of that group. But uh, he asked he asked questions. He's about uh, seeing people and, and success leaves clues. And he talks about people um, that uh, that are successful have specific habits. Do you have any Do you have any habits or rituals that you do on a daily basis? Uh, I start the day with uh, meditation, first of all, and uh, I'm doing six-phase meditation, so uh, I do the visualization. I practically do the visualization like a very short version of it be before every single appointment to get my mind right and in the right space. So, yes, uh, every evening I'm sort of doing, so in the morning I probably spend 20, 25 minutes on that and uh, in the evening i'm doing sort of like 10 minutes uh, going through so i want to make sure that during the sleep sometimes i'm putting like uh, also the meditation tapes or not tapes these days but <laughs> i'm used to two tapes <laughs> uh, oh. uh, like an all night meditation as well because i believe that you can learn even when you sleep because your subconscious is always working is uh, I like to program my subconscious the way I want it to be, not not the way that everybody else. And the biggest habit probably is not to listen to others. Yeah. Who cares what the others say? If they if they sort of trying to put you down, that's because you know you're better than them, and that's what usually is it's just simply generosity. So the the biggest habit is probably not listening to to others, because they will always tell you that something cannot be done. I've heard that so many times in my life that it's not funny. Yeah. But, uh, here I am, I'm here. here. If I would be listening to the others, I would never be the, in Australia for the first stop. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's simply believe in yourself. That's the main thing to me, because that's, you know, give you the behaviors that it will get you there. And the good habits, obviously, step by step. But at the same time, I'm not even as much like, for me, the vision is more important than the goal. So simply find what you dislike because you're never going to change anything in life if, if you don't find something that you don't like about your life. Then create the new vision and it's easier to create the good vision than, than the goals because the goals quite often can put you down because you, let's say if you achieve it, you're happy for five minutes and then you, what, what, you start asking what's next. Then you simply can create the, so if you know what you feel and, and you've got your strong why, then you can create the plan and, 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 and the road to success. And obviously you have to be prepared to pay the price for it. It's nothing come for free in this life. 
So if you're not prepared to, to pay the price, I wouldn't bother to, to even starting. Stay in your comfort zone and be what you are. But if you want to achieve something, you have to get out of the comfort zone. Because that's where the success starts, at the edge of the comfort zone. Well, that's true. I'll tell you, um, I found that uh, before I got on Facebook, you know, going live is something that I always hated to do. And, and when you find something that you hate to do, you're talking about the comfort zone. That's usually where you do have to go. You have to go there to grow. And even the name of this group, um, struggle, succeed, you know, you come through that struggle and, and climb and claw. And if you make it through, then you grow because of that growth that, that leads to success. And, um, those three words really stood out to me. That's, that's why I started this group. And, um, I hope to do a lot of other interviews with people like yourself. I just want you to know, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day. I know this is your day and, and you need to be uh, absolutely my pleasure. Money. Oh, well, I bet I, I, I will be moving. I will make money today. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I still am having right. three appointments to do, so. Excellent. I will well, definitely, because in June, you. we're going for even bigger record. We're going to be, because we beat, as a group, we beat the whole record, but we didn't beat our own record in my division. So this, this month, we'll do it. And Excellent. we're right on well, the target I, after the first month, first I'll week. I wish you luck with that. And, uh, and I'm sure you will with the right mindset. You guys will go after it and, and break some more records. Feel free to, uh, to add anything to our group that I feel like would, would help the people that are in here. Uh, we're all struggling, we're all growing and we're all succeeding. And how it is after, after you success level, then it starts all over. You have to, to go to the next level. You got to struggle again, right? That's correct. That, that's, that's how it works. And, and it's never going to change. So, and it, like we all got some fears. It's no question about it, uh, but you can look the fear into different aspects. You can forget everything and run, or you can face everything and rise. The choice is always up to you. That's probably what I will leave this event. So, so look the fear the way you want it, but there is no option. You have to go through it. You have to go through that wall to actually get where you want to go, because usually the, the end is near and never give up, because most people are actually giving up. Uh, when they almost at the summit, I've got a friend that runs uh, every year. This year, probably he won't be doing the, the climb to Kilimanjaro. Wow! And most people, most people giving up when they almost there. They keep going, and then no, they deciding that they can't do it. They have to get the helicopter sometimes to get people off the mountain and things like that. But it's always pretty good, pretty much at the top. And that's happened every single year. So, and he's doing this every year, except for this year. I don't think so. They let him do it this year <laughs> with the pandemic. Well, that's a very good point, you know, because so many people don't, don't know what they've missed out on in their life because they did just that. They quit just before they reached the summit. So um, we just want to encourage everybody to keep, keep pushing, keep digging, right? Absolutely. Just do it. doesn't matter how slow, how fast you're going. It's not the, it's not the sprint. It's a marathon. And if you do it, and obviously stick with the team because, you know, by yourself, you just a drop. But if you do it as a team, you become the ocean and it's hard to stop the ocean. So, yep. so definitely right. that's how I would be looking at it. I made a statement the other day, you know, I was talking about legacy and uh, in a little piece that I wrote about legacy, there's a lot of people who have a legacy and have built one, but I don't know of anybody that's built it by themselves. Do you? No. <laughs> Not as far as I know, and I know a few people, and I'm talking even, you know, the, the very famous people and, and rich people, they never have done it by themselves. Nope. It takes you the have to have the people behind you. Yep. And that's why you have to be a leader, because otherwise, if you turn around and it's nobody there, you're not the leader. <laughs> you're not leading anything, that's true. That's well, correct. Kept you, I've kept you a long time. I appreciate your time very much. A pleasure, Charles. Pleasure. And uh, anytime I can help and anything, that's give me a L. Awesome. I certainly will. And we look forward to seeing you again. No worries. Thanks very much, Charles. Have a great night in you. And I better go and do some sales. You better get to work. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well. It's almost midday. <laughs> Take care, Peter. 
Okay, Mike. Now, Boris, thank you very much. Enjoy the day and all the best to all the group. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. We appreciate you being with us and giving us your time. I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, this interview with Peter Ryback. We want you to be sure and join us next Sunday. We're going to have a very special guest, and I'm sure you will not want to miss it. So come back next week and join us for Struggle, Grow, Succeed. This is where we welcome the struggle and then we attack it. And on the other side of growth, we find our success. See you later.